All right. My name is Elena Blaine Schultes, and I'm a master student at Mississippi State University under the advisement of Dr. Dan Reynolds. And I will be presenting today on the on the effect of 2,4-D concentration and application timing on soybean growth and yield. With herbicide-resistant traits in cropping systems, we see increased weed control options as well as overall improved weed control. We also have additional mode of actions in the field and then more flexibility in application timing. Some more recent advancements in soybean and cotton seed traits are the dicamba and 2,4-D resistant seed traits. With these auxin resistant seed traits, we're going to see large broadcast applications of auxin being made. And with these applications, we believe that auxin injury is likely to occur due to tank contamination and our drift to off-target crops. Some prior research has been conducted at Mississippi State University in cotton that has indicated that a yield loss can occur from 2,4-D or dicamba. Previous research has indicated that soybeans exposed to auxin herbicides can develop vegetative malformations and produce a lower yielding crop. However, the extent of that damage is dependent upon the rate and timing of the application that is being made. It has also been suggested that applications in 2,4-D made at the V5 growth stage showed greater studying and soybean growth. Also, less, ap less apinasty was observed at this growth stage when compared to other application timings. Our research objectives were to determine the effect of 2,4-D amine concentration on soybean growth and yield, and also to determine the effect of 2,4-D amine application timing on soybean growth and yield using a single low-use application rate. We're going to focus on the first objective for now. We had a randomized complete block with a factorial arrangement of treatments with factor A being the application timing and factor B being the herbicide rate. This study was conducted over six site years, two being in Starkville, Mississippi, two being in Brooksville, Mississippi, one being in Stoneville, Mississippi, and one being in rural Arkansas. Factor A were the two application timings. We had a vegetative application made at the V3 growth stage and a reproductive application made at the R1 growth stage. Factor B were the six application rates. We used the dimethylamine formulation of 2,4-D. What we did is we took a 1x rate, which is equivalent to 16 fluid ounces per acre, and we fractioned that down all the way to a 1,256x rate. And we also included a, a, a 0x rate for, as an untreated check for comparison. All applications were tractor applied using a two-row shielded boom with a delivery volume of 100, with 140 liters per hectare, which is equivalent to 15 gallons per acre. In 2012, we used the T-Jet XR8002 spray tips. And in 2013, we used the T-Jet TTI 11002 spray tips. The data that we collected were visual evaluations at 7, 14, 21, and 28 days after the treatments were made. We also collected plant heights after each application timing, as well as node counts. And then we also collected yield and determined yield reduction. All the data that I'm going to show you today was analyzed in SAS 9.3 under Proc with a significant level of 0 0.05. This is some of the symptomology that we saw in the field. As you can see in the upper left hand corner, the cupping of the trifoliant. In the middle picture, you can see the twisting of the stems and petioles, so that epinastic response that you typically see with auxin herbicides. And then as well as some callusing on the f that formed on the stems and leaves. This picture represents uh, 2,4-D applied at a 0x rate, so this is the untreated check, but just to set you up for the rest of the slides, all the pictures on the left-hand side are from the V3 application, and all the pictures on the right-hand side are from the R1 application. All pictures that I'm going to show you today were taken 21 days after the treatments were made. We had four row plots, and we only treated the two center rows, as you can see the marks on the, on the screen there. This is 2,4-D applied at a 1x rate a quarter x rate, a sixteenth x rate, a sixty-fourth x rate, and then the lowest rate, the one two fifty-six x rate. This graph represents soybean visual injury 14 days after the treatments were made. This is averaged over all years and locations. On the y-axis we have percent injury, and the x-axis we have the fractional rates that were applied as well as the untreated check. Um, the blue bars represent the treatments that received the application in the V3 growth stage, and the green bars represent the treatments that received the applications in the R1 growth stage. As you can see with the 1x rate, we had greater than 40% visual injury from either uh, application timing. And then there in the lowest rate, we had an interaction there. That's why we're having to display this data together. 
and it ranged anywhere from 3% to 12% visual injury depending on the application timing. This graph represents soybean visual injury 28 days after the application was made. With the 1x rate we had greater than 30% visual injury for either application timing. And then I like to point out with the three lowest application rates, the 16th x-ray, the 64th x-ray, and the 1256 256 x-ray, it was very hard to distinguish those from each other in the field. They were very, uh, they looked very similar when you were trying to compare them. And but as you can see, that they were uh, very minimal as well. Injury was less than 10% for all of those rates, no matter when the application was made. This graph represents the soybean height reductions. This is by application rates. So this is averaged over all those years and locations. With the 1x rate, the treatments that received in the R1 growth stage, we had a 22% height reduction. And those that received in the V3 growth stage, we had nearly a 40% height reduction. With the lowest X rate, we had anywhere from a 3% height reduction to a 10% height reduction. As I said before, injury was minimal at the three lowest application rates. Injury was reduced over time in both application timings. So we saw greater uh, visual injury f at 14 days than we saw at 28 days. Plant height reductions may be a good indicator for 240 injury on soybeans based off the data that we saw. And in the field, it was difficult to differentiate between the application timings. This graph represents the yield reductions by application rate. So this is averaged over all those timings, years, and locations. With the 1x rate, we had a 48% yield reduction. And then with our lowest rate, we had a 5% yield reduction, which was not significantly different from the untreated check. These are the yield reductions by application timings. This is averaged over all those rates that I just showed you, years and locations. The treatments that received the application in the R1 growth stage had an 18% yield reduction, and those that received it in the V3 growth stage had an 11% yield reduction. Greater yield reductions occurred from higher rates at 2,4-D and also from the R1 application timing. Yield reductions were minimal in the three lowest application rates, just like we saw with the visual injury, and with the lowest application rate, the 1,2,56x rate. That rate did not significantly different from the, differ from the untreated check. Now we're going to move on to the second objective, which to remind you is to determine the effect of 2,4-D amine application timing on soybean growth and yield using a single low use application rate. We had a randomized complete block design. This study was conducted over four site years, one being in Starkville, Mississippi, one being in Brooksville, Mississippi, one being in Stoneville, Mississippi, and then also one in rural Arkansas. What we did is we took a single low use application rate, which was four fluid ounces per acre of 2,4-D, which is equivalent to the quarter X rate from the experiment that I just showed you. We use the same formula, formulation, the dimethylamine formulation of 2,4-D. And what we did is we took that low application rate and we applied it at weekly intervals, beginning at one week after plant emergence, all the way to uh, <clears throat> 14 weeks after plant emergence. And then we also included an untreated check that received zero herbicide for, for comparisons. All of our applications were made using a backpack sprayer with a two-row handheld of boom. Our delivery volume was 15 gallons per acre. We used CO2 as our propellant. And we used T-Jet TTI 1100 spray tips to make all our applications. I'm going to click through these pictures rather quickly, but as I do so, keep in mind that all these treatments receive the same application rate. The only difference is application timing. Uh, once again, we used uh, four row plots and we treated only the two center rows. So this is four fluid ounces per acre of 2,4-D applied one week after plant emergence. Two weeks after plant emergence. Three weeks after plant emergence. Four weeks after plant emergence. Five weeks. Six weeks. Seven weeks. Eight weeks nine weeks. And then after nine weeks uh, we saw no significant visual injury, height reductions, or yield reductions. So I'm not going to show you those pictures for time's sake. This graph represents the soybean visual injury 14 days after the treatments were made. This is averaged over all those years and locations. On the y-axis we have percent injury and the x-axis we have application timing. As you can see in this graph we saw the greatest amount of visual injury that occurred at weeks four, five, six, and seven range anywhere from a 21% visual injury to 25% visual injury. 
And then after the nine-week application was made, we saw no significant visual injury at this time. This graph represents soybean visual injury 28 days after the application was made. As you can see, visual injury is significantly lower 28 days than we just saw at 14 days after the treatments were made. The greatest amount of injury that was observed at 28 days were weeks 4, 5, 6, and 7, which ranged anywhere from 17% to 21% visual injury. And then once again, after the 8-week application was made, we saw no significant visual injury in the field. This graph represents the soybean height reduction. This is averaged over all years and locations. On the y-axis, we have percent reduction, and on the x-axis, we have the application timing. We saw the greatest amount of height reduction at week 7. It was about a 12% height reduction. And then once again, in the later application timings, we saw no significant height reductions. Visual injury decreased over time, so we saw less injury at 28 days after the application was made than we saw at 14 days after the application was made. Visual injury was not significant after the 9-week application was made. Height reductions were greatest at weeks 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then no significant height reductions recorded after the 10-week application were made. This graph represents soybean yield reductions by application timing. This is averaged over all the years and locations. On the y-axis we have percent reduction and on the x-axis we have application timing. Uh, we saw the greatest amount of yield reduction that occurs anywhere from weeks 2 to 7, which ranged anywhere from 6% to 11% yield reduction. And then once again, we saw no significant yield reduction after the 9-week application was made, with an, excep with an exception of the 12-week uh, application. There's a little blip there. This is a scale that we use to determine the soybean growth stages in the field. I'd like to draw your attention to the late vegetative, early reproductive growth stages in particular. This graph represents the soybean yield reduction by growth stage at application. Once again, this is averaged over all those years and locations. On the y-axis, we have percent, yield, percent reduction, and on the x-axis, we have the actual growth stage at application timing. As you can see, we saw the greatest amount of injury, or the greatest amount of yield reduction that occurred anywhere from the V3 to R3 growth stage. And then basically after the plant was in the uh, R5 growth stage, we saw no significant yield reductions with the exception of that R7 growth stage. We had a little blip there. Overall, uh, the greatest yield reductions were observed at the late vegetative, early reproductive growth stages, which were that two to seven weeks after crop emergence. No significant yield reductions occurred after the nine-week application was made. Uh, that weekly application corresponded with the R5 growth stage. Overall, the higher rates of 2,4-D resulted in the greatest amount of injury, height reductions, and yield reductions. Uh, the reproductive application, especially the R2 growth stage, resulted in the greatest amount of injury, height reduction, and yield reductions. Uh, throughout this experiment, height reductions showed a similar trend to yield reductions. Overall, these data indicate that soybeans are extremely sensitive to low concentrations of 2,4-D. Thus, sprayer hydrine and drift mitigation will be a very, very important to consider in the future. Soybean response to 2,4-D is dependent on the actual growth stage that the soybean is in when that application is made. In the future, I believe that it's going to be important to look at a comparison of application timing on determinate versus indeterminate soybean varieties, as well as a static rate comparison of various new salts to 2,4-D. This is my literature review. At this time, I'd like to thank the Mississippi Soybean Promotion Board for all your support and uh, funding for this research. I'd also like to thank my committee members as well as my fellow graduate students. Without your efforts, none of this would have been possible. If you have any questions regarding this uh, presentation, feel free to email me. My email address is located in the lower left-hand corner of the screen.